children, children, children. Maestro, after all those discoveries after landing on the moon, <laughs> what's left to be invented? They've already discovered everything. She's right, they already invented everything. Anyway, now we know it all. That's yeah. your turn. Children, if you only knew how much there is still for us to discover, to understand, the origins of life, of matter, the infinitely small, which we know so little about, the way the brain works, as well as evolution. The mysteries of outer space. In no time, your lives and those of your children will change. Just imagine tomorrow and after tomorrow, it's the year 2020. Coffee, toast, and soft boiled egg for you, sir, as usual. Hot chocolate, bread, and jam fingers. I remind you, sir, you are late, if I may say so. You're often late. All of you, have a good breakfast. <sighs> oh, thanks, Nestor. Will you go bring me one of the uh, apricots in the basket there? Correction, oranges are present here, but not apricots. Young sir's teasing Nestor again. Not funny. You know, you're amazing, Nestor. How are you able to do all of this? I am a first-class A1 butler, sir. Each one of my hands contains 6,000 microcaptors, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for you, this is going to be a big day at the World Assembly. Yes, I must be off. I have to be there by 11 today. And you? As usual, I'll be working at the Planetary Research Center. to give you a call. Morning, Fred. Where are you? We left Washington a few minutes ago. Our flight suborbital in. We'll have crossed the Atlantic in 25 minutes. Listen, Fred. It's absolutely essential that the World Assembly vote for a colonization. There'll be opposition. I know, Fred. Always the same ones, but... Only way to win. We go step by step. I'm told they're issuing new school bags. Right, with computers already integrated. You know who <laughs> is... Oh, hey! Ah! Thanks. Huh? Let's go, children, all of you, around me. Now I'll explain how all these things work. Uh, uh, here you can all see the display screen, eh? and the computer keyboard, naturally, laser printer, microphone, loudspeaker, and so on. And you press this button, and you're linked directly to the memory bank, and you can request any information that you need. Are there any questions? But, Maestro, shouldn't there be a library? Good question. This laser disc contains a library of 100,000 pages. It's about 500 books. You may insert it like this, and then you get your display on the screen. Now, let's start our lesson. And because now it's in the news, we'll talk about the planet Mars. And we'll look at some of the holograms. Mars. The planet will be man's next objective. Can anybody tell me about it? Now, of course, you can have the data instantly using the computer in your school bag. Go on, now, try them out. Go ahead. About 6,800 kilometers in diameter. Yes, yeah, so it is bigger or smaller than the Earth. Uh, approximately two times smaller. Correct answer. <laughs> now, let's make a comparison. <laughs> And Mars is at what distance? It, too, has an orbit around the sun. Its distance uh -huh. from Earth is constantly changing. I'd call that an excellent answer, my dear. Now, the sun regarding Mars... Uh, yes, Mars uh, yeah, ...is located between 60 and 100,000 kilometers from Earth, which is two to 300 times our distance from the moon. For a long time, people believed there was life on Mars, and little Martians, well, if we judge according to the size of this fault, three or 4,000 kilometers in length, 120 kilometers wide, volcanoes big as France, and rising to a height of 27 kilometers, the little Martians would be giants. <laughs> 
wonder, could we breathe on Mars? I don't know. Huh? No, its atmosphere contains 95% carbon dioxide, deadly for living creatures. Mm. But with today's technology, it won't be a problem. Great, then let's all go. One day, perhaps soon. The decision is up to the World Assembly. The question that is today before the World Assembly is an important one. The colonization of another planet would commit future generations for more than a century. The European delegate will speak. We are all aware our planet is no longer adequate. The solutions which we have adopted in our previous assembly, namely cities in the sky, floating cities, cities underwater, can't be a real answer to the problem. What's more, the rising level of all the Earth's oceans, consequence of the greenhouse effect, will for several decades, will concern millions of human beings. The future of humankind demands that we conquer other planets. This project. 600 billion dollars in the cost of your project. Where are you going to find the money like that? In your own pocket or in mine? I warn you, my country is not going to vote Mr. for... Mr. President, may I continue with my address? May I request the delegate from Calzovinia to refrain from disrupting <laughs> the proceedings? And to wait until he has the floor? This project will require a dedicated and long financial commitment of the whole world. Our base Liberty, 400 kilometers above the Earth, is almost operational. We will use it to launch spaceships outside the Earth's gravitational field. Our lunar base can extract oxygen from its rocks and minerals and combustible fuels. A nine-month journey one way, plus the factor of the ellipses, 22 months including all considerations, then the return, no human can withstand all that. And the production of red corpuscles will surely slow down, and no white cells produced at all? It means anemia, calcium deficiency, with one sure result, weak bones, hyperactive kidneys, and dehydration. Solar radiation is going to give everyone cancer. <laughs> I have carefully noted all of the objections of the various delegates, but the system of artificial gravity equipping our transport vehicles is now perfected, eliminating many of the problems. Together with a full multi-band sun shield. And the cost of the project. Ever think about that? The cost is, of course, very great. But all this work will produce techniques that are new and new materials. And if we succeed in towing even one small asteroid to Earth's orbit, the advantages will be beyond measure. Metals, minerals, enough to supply raw materials for the next ten centuries. Then the operation, in fact, will be profitable. The success of this operation can't be guaranteed. We can be sure of one thing, price that, I guarantee you, will be astronomical. A preliminary exploration with robots will mean we can test all elements of the program at a cost 50 times lower. And if preliminary tests all prove encouraging, we will proceed with the colonization of Mars. Has anyone anything to add? <coughs> then I now call for a vote on the proposal which is at hand. Those who are for the project, One hundred and fourteen. Those against? One hundred and fourteen in favor, seventeen against. The Mars project as amended is adopted by majority. The meeting is closed. The ice caps we see on Mars reflect the sun's rays like a massive mirror. I collected this seaweed in our polar regions. Great quantities of this will be spread over the poles on Mars, absorbing solar heat, and so furnishing heat to the planet and producing water. Look. Then our second step, studying the terrain by launching robotic detectors, like this one. We'll launch them from our moon base, then analyze the soil. And the Liberty Base construction goes on.
you well deserve your diploma. You are now Space Flight Commander. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. It is with great pleasure I award you the highest certificate as Space Construction Engineer. Diploma of Engineering Biochemistry. Congratulations. Diploma as Engineer in Spatial Mechanics. Congratulations. I know that whatever you build won't come down. <laughs> Oh. No, 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 it's your turn. Failed the examination, laboratory work, zero conduct, zero. Oh, well, my lad, uh, maybe you can do better next time. Hmm? Yeah, right, right. I, I think me too. I'll, uh, uh, yeah, well, I, I guess I, I ought to come back as well. <laughs> Hello, delegates and honored guests. Colonel Peter, director of the Planetary Research Center, is with us today and will report on the precise situation concerning Operation Mars. On Liberty Base, the cargo for Mars is at last ready. Guidance will be by automatic pilot. It will transport all the equipment and supplies we'll need to make our first settlement on the Red Planet. This is the primary base. This is the main vehicle. The module for Mars landing, the engine for insertion into planned trajectory, propulsion vehicle for the crew's return. Once the vehicle is off on a trajectory to Mars, another vehicle sets off, one that is very light. It will leave Liberty Base with four astronauts. Being much faster, it will catch up with the first vehicle. Meanwhile, on our lunar base, we are stocking up on oxygen from the lunar rocks. Once the base on Mars is set up, this oxygen will be sent by electromagnetic capsules and by cargo vessels. <sighs> we are also researching radically new techniques for acceleration, including asteroid coupling acceleration. You are all acquainted with the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars. Many of these massive boulders wander into a region between Mars and Earth. Our spaceships could develop a technique of harpooning, a sling effect. Of course, speed would be considerably increased and it would improve the trajectory. With the consequent saving in time, money, and resources. It's a big waste! You're wasting all our money! With regard to asteroids, it is my duty to inform you that surveillance telescopes have recently detected an asteroid that appears to be worrying scientists. It seems to be headed straight for Earth. It is approaching us at a speed of 100,000 kilometers per hour. Whoa! What are the chances the object will stay on its course and will be in collision with Earth? Difficult to say. At present, it is approaching Mars. It all depends on its trajectory, its angle of attack, into the gravitation of Mars and the Earth. Answer the man's question, sir. What are the chances of its hitting Earth? Today, I would say there's one chance in 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> They should have been back. All right, folks, we're back for lunch. Save me some broccoli. Hi, hi, guys. Hi. A few bolts had to be tightened. Sorry, there's no broccoli. Guess what it is? Well, from the taste, I'd say, is it veal? No, I'd say it's chicken. Well, then you'd be wrong. This meat is from animals we've raised on the moon to get us used to what we'll be eating on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> All the same, it's not as good as a triple burger down on Earth. I'm getting bored with the preparations we're doing. It's time we left, do you agree with me? Come on, a little more patience. We'll get our orders to go pretty soon. Oh, no. Get me the President of the World Assembly. It's urgent. It's gone.
gone past Mars. And this time, there's a real danger that it will head straight for Earth. If it did impact with our planet, it would destroy all forms of life. Can't we destroy it? Just set off an explosion? Setting off an explosion too near Earth would be catastrophic. Well, then... A neutron bomb might knock it, of course. But the only craft that's operational and with sufficient range is for the Mars Project, which is then compromised. So should we use it. We have no choice. We must destroy this thing. Or else it's the end of humanity. If you agree, I'll go to Liberty immediately. No time to waste. bombs I brought in my vehicle are being secured to your ship, and they're going to be ready to go. I'm sorry I have to do this, but now we have no choice. It's the greatest danger of all time. But it takes us on a completely modified trajectory, right, sir? The region you'll be headed for is dense with asteroids. If you find a harpoon site that's good, then you may be able to get onto your original trajectory. But, sir, has it ever been done? Yes, machines did it, only not always with success. What are our chances? Difficult to say. But all of our observation stations are on full alert to help guide you. Good luck. In two days, the asteroid's in range. As long as we don't miss it. Yes, Commander. It is unlikely they will ever return to their orbit around the Sun. We'll have to go to Plan B. Bring them back around Venus. Yes, Colonel. A shame, but what can we do? One second. One second, Colonel. I'm told that, yes, an asteroid's oh. been spotted. Correct rotation. They ought to be approaching in two days. Position, 9 astral degrees, 66, 966. Good luck. Good is all that, huh? Because I know we're never gonna go to Mars. 
Ah, uh, sure, people will go to Mars, and much farther still, because it's our nature to discover the universe. Don't you recall Henry the Navigator's sailors? They wanted to go beyond the limits of the known world, where the sea flowed into a bottomless pit. And then all the discoverers we've talked about, uh, who changed our world. One day man will also transform Mars. Transform it? But how's that possible? Uh, you'll see. Just imagine. Imagine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, let's go. This is what Mars was originally. Before the first men set foot on its surface. caps to supply water and heat the planet using the sun's rays, then release the gases trapped in the planet's rocks, releasing oxygen. There is a greenhouse effect, releasing quantities of polar ice as water, then evaporation into clouds and into rain. Exactly. Lakes, rivers, and the sky grew bluer and bluer. What is this? One day, in just a few passing centuries, humans and animals will live right here, just as free as they'd be on Earth. That's right, children. Ah! <laughs> uh. The Daedalus, with its nuclear engine on its way toward the star Barnard six light years away. Oh. After tomorrow, my son? Well, men and women will build other spaceships that might catch up with this one before it ever reaches its final destination. <laughs> <Crazy>. <laughs> we will have great craft propelled by solar light. Then those that sail on lasers. <laughs> Spaceships using nuclear fusion, and why not? Antimatter will travel at a speed approaching that of light, 300,000 kilometers per second, a billion kilometers per hour. Even farther into the future, tachyon power 300 times faster still. The only drawback, you'd see your fellow passengers aging before your very eyes. <laughs> yes. No, that is still only a distant dream, like all those fabulous craft I told you about. But we have only to remember the fantastic progress mankind has achieved in one little century. Who's to say he won't find someday all kinds of shortcuts to space-time, so that it's possible to voyage to the stars tomorrow? Tomorrow.